Great. Good morning. Uh, it's kind of interesting having to present on the second day because after uh, free beer the night before, what you discover when you wander in here is for those people that are watching the live stream, there are actually only three people in the audience and the rest are like Mystery Science Theater 3000 cutouts. Uh, <clears throat> so I, I, was, uh, I was trying to find something relevant yesterday to, uh, to link uh, you know, this interesting topic of cloud computing to, uh, to stuff that's going on in uh, in, 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 current, uh, in, in current view, and, and I, I, I stumbled across something on MSNBC, which I thought was actually far more interesting. Uh, a man pleads guilty to driving while influenced in a lazy boy. And this, this happened yesterday. Now, this happened in, anybody from Wisconsin? Because, uh, you're really, oh, that's awesome. All right, so, so the thing that's most interesting, besides the fact that this guy drank like nine beers and cruised down the street and got pulled over in a lazy boy, is the fact that, he had to drive it to the bar in the first place, and everybody kind of thought that that was just fine. So I, I find that really interesting. It has nothing to do with the cloud, really. Uh, so we are going to talk about uh, jumping the shark, uh, this definition of cloud. Um, issues, again, that, that pairs up really well what we just heard about in terms of trust, uh, and then talk about uh, this analogy of stacked turtles and, and cloud ponage, as we like to call it. Um, so when, when, when faced with the dilemma of presenting to a bunch of people about what cloud is, uh, you know, it, 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 there's the obligatory set of definitions, and you're not going to escape from them today, unfortunately, with me. Uh, I'm going to give you some, but they're relevant for setting up the, uh, the discussion. Anybody know, by the way, where the phrase jumping the shark came from? Yeah, two or three. Well, it's actually there. So the writers ran out of a set of ideas for stories on happy days, and so they basically said, well, we'll have Fonzie jump a shark on water skis in a lake, and that was where jumping the shark came from. Uh, believe it or not. So um, the, the issue with, with cloud computing is that there's, there's two very interesting perspectives when it comes to definitional nuance of cloud. Uh, you have the technicians or the provider's view of cloud, which is very um, precise, very empirical. So this is in this definition that I, that I gend up graphically. You've got deployment models, delivery models, essential characteristics. When you ask somebody who is technical, what is cloud, give me some examples. Usually they talk about Amazon Web Services, uh, uh, Google App Engine, Salesforce.com, things that ring true that you hear about in terms of service provision and cloud. Uh, however, there's an interesting set of collisions also from the consumer's perspective, which really um, lends itself to some interesting discussion, which is the fact that uh, anything that a person, consumer uses that connects via the Internet, that interacts with or operates on or stores their data is cloud, right? Uh, so that, that becomes, and that sets up some very interesting definitional issues, not the least of which uh, is stuff like that where we talk about, I couldn't resist, I'm sorry. If you talk about a service that's connected to the internet and it's cloud, and then, all, then it's the death of cloud when something bad happens. So we're gonna kind of get through some of this fog today uh, and talk about uh, some of the realities, but some of the things that really do matter uh, from both the, the, uh, the uh, perspective of consumers and uh, technicians. But because most of us are technicians, we're gonna kind of get to the heart of the matter here and talk about cloud. So there are three, um, models, basic models for cloud delivery, uh, when, uh, and, and they're, they're categorized in terms of these delivery models. Uh, it's called the SPI models, software as a service, platform as a service, infrastructure as a service. And those three things are actually targeted very specifically in terms of offerings and how they're presented to three very distinct uh, groups of, of, or audiences. Software as a service is really targeted towards end users. Give me the flexibility of an application, deliver it in this thing called the cloud, and I'll use it, it'll take my pain away. Platform as a service is uh, delivered or targeted towards developers, build your apps on the cloud to supply um, applications to end users. And ultimately, infrastructure as a service is really this notion of system administrators. How do I take what I, what I today operate internally and put it in the cloud? But what does this really look like to somebody who has to understand from a security perspective what cloud means in these three models? So I gend up, up a kind of a, a taxonomy, ontology of what cloud looks like. So from an infrastructure as a service perspective, very similar to kind of an OSI model approach, you've got facilities, the compute network and storage, hardware layer that sits in them, a kind of intermingled layer of abstraction and core connectivity and delivery, and then a set of APIs to manage it. That abstraction layer could be virtualization, it could be multi-tenancy in databases, it could be anything that allows you to actually add um, more than one uh, level of service for, for more than one constituent customer. So platform as a service is really infrastructure as a service with a set of integration middleware development framework hooks on top of infrastructure as a service that lets you write and bind and develop applications on top of the infrastructure as a service. And software as a service ultimately is then the rest of the stack. Data, 
uh, metadata, content, applications, ways of presenting and interacting with data. So with those kind of pictures in mind, we look at that Lego approach, when we think about what security uh, or how security is impacted in these three models, in this derivative uh, compute um, uh, uh, model, we, we, we kind of need to understand uh, how it changes, where responsibility and accountability change. So from the perspective of infrastructure as a service, the line of responsibility for security administration is drawn right above the API level. So anything below the, the orange line, the provider uh, is responsible for. The VMs and containers, OS and applications and data is really left up to the user to manage uh, and secure, right? So uh, the general focus here is on virtual machines in a virtualized environment and things that are guest-based. In, uh, when you look at what that means from a service contract and enforcement perspective, here's a, here's a good uh, example from Amazon. Uh, the part in yellow, you bear sole responsibility for adequate security protection and backup of your content and applications. Okay. So from the perspective of how you think about what security means at a contractual level, it, it, it kind of abstracts or hides a lot of the moving parts when you think about how teams approach securing infrastructure as a service. Platform as a service, programmatic, uh, uh, the kind of programmatic security, again, the line moves up a little bit. That the consumer is still responsible for then dealing with applications and data, right? So uh, you are responsible, strangely enough, for making sure that applications and data are, are, are um, appropriately protected. Uh, I went looking for the terms of service for Google App uh, Engine, and I got this. Uh, you are responsible for security of your passwords and for any use of your account. That's as much as I could find from the, from the perspective of security clause as it relates to what they delivered. Mm, doesn't leave me with a very uh, happy feeling. Uh, when you look at platform as a service, uh, and, and, and Robert uh, Fry from Salesforce is going to present later, told, you know, we were talking about generalizations, and, and these are generalizations. But for the most part, when you look at a SaaS offering, you are essentially uh, uh, allowing the uh, provider of that SaaS service to kind of own the stack and provide you with the security up and down uh, the, uh, all of the feature sets. Now there are things that you are still responsible for um, in terms of how you interface with your users, how you might take care of some of your data, but for the most part up and down the stack um, the software as a service is, uh, is all encompassing from a security perspective. Now to Salesforce's point and credit, the part in yellow here was probably the most specific uh, set of uh, things that were contractually stated that they would do. You know, we'll take care of confidentiality, phys uh, physical security, uh, we'll, do a, we'll do the best job we can in these particular areas, uh, and they're a little bit more specific than what, you, than what you get in infrastructure and platform. And that's interesting because when you think about what uh, both the technical and the contractual uh, issues mean to security, uh, and you look at these three models, uh, first of all, the lower down the stack the provider stops, the more responsible uh, for, securing, for securing those uh, applications and data you are. That should make sense. When you think about what it means tactically, the software as a service layer, you're really RFPing or contracting it in. You are, you're basically agreeing or stipulating terms in a contract to ensure that your apps and data are safe. And here, you're still, for the most part, responsible for building it in. So the level of effort uh, and the level of control uh, is really uh, proportional to the service delivery model. And that's really, really important when you think about cloud because depending which delivery model you use, uh, available compensating controls may be kind of at the level of good enough given the uh, amount of mass scale, or they may not exist at all. So as networking, as a lot of this functionality gets abstracted away where, we, where we're exposed to less and less of the moving parts, your ability to integrate compensating controls and what you would ordinarily do in a physical environment that you own is limited. Um, with that, you may see more and more uh, APIs and interfaces, both open and proprietary, but what it really means is that we uh, ultimately come down to putting our applications and content in somebody else's care, and it comes down to trust, right? Uh, this is kind of an overused cliche, but what trust means uh, in relation to cloud has, has really taken on a new dimension uh, because it's starting to uh, cause people to think uh, very diligently about what, what it means if a large percent of my application and content moves elsewhere. So when we look at trust, you know, any of the oper every operation we have today uh, in some form or function comes down to trusting somebody else. When it comes to cloud, when it comes to anything connected to the internet, it's trust in providers, trust in protocols, trust in hardware, trust in software. It's not an unfamiliar term. What is interesting, however, is the definitional nuance between trust and control. They mean different things. People merge them together. So here's the problem. Trust is one thing, but control is another. And, and ultimately, cloud is all about gracefully losing control. It's surrendering your data, your applications, and your content to somebody else, right? From a security perspective, this makes people very uncomfortable because control is really